the Welks are the twisty shells. You're a big one. That's the Lawrence Welk of Welks. Just want to get out, see some tidal pools, walk along the beach, and not do it in a mile and a half. This might be a good one. A and this is part, I guess part of it is actually on the Olympic National Park. That's what Susanna said, so if I'm wrong, just blame her. We didn't know. That's the thing, we didn't know. And shh, don't tell the child it might be 10 miles. <laughs> gotta be angry. Nobody really relies on drifters. No. No. How close are we? Not that close. <laughs> okay. Matt, do you have intestinal fortitude? No. What is that? Here's my research team hard at work again researching facts for the for this video. I lied, they're not hard at work finding facts, they're playing Pokemon Go. It's a good It's a sickness. Look at that. So last time we did one of these beaches, this is the Kalalak Bay, uh, beach area. So this time we're doing Ruby Beach, which is at the top, the closest one to us. That we can go to Ruby Beach. Starting. <laughs> Very nice. I got skipped out of that one. I can't even do it when I'm on the ground. I hit your mom. I was going to hit means it never happens. Three. There's only four. There's five. There's five movies? The last two are part one, part two. Probably for grossing. I thought it was one, two, and then three, four. Three, four would number, they split number three. You're saying it's one, two, three, plus four, five? I only it's, remember having four discs, but yeah. I don't know. Well, there's uh, oh, God. the first one, there's New Moon, then there's Total Eclipse, and then there's Breaking Dawn for one. And then two. Wow. We introduced the, the boy to Twilight because that's where we're at, and it's, it's gotten out of control now. No. Nope. It's not out of control. I was just to say hi to you. I wasn't oh, right now. hi. So our last day in the Forks area, we came out to Ruby Beach. So this is kind of like a, like a more cramped version of Rialto because we had to take that really long walk, but here everything's kind of close. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as pretty. It's still pretty. But it is, I mean, it's beautiful. So if you don't have a lot of time um, and you just want to get out, see some tidal pools, walk along the beach and not do it in a mile and a half, this might be a good one. It's a shoe place though, not a flip-flop place. Oh yeah, don't. This is rocks. It's, I know right here is sand, but to get out here, it's all rocks. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And now we're gonna go check out some more tidal pools and see if we find some more starfish. Yep. Ew. Really? Corbin? I'm not feeling that. It just feels kind of like a wet dog. Um, 
Yeah. That's not even feeling it. You didn't feel it, you just touched it. The dome. That's a limpid. Oh. The whelks are the twisty shells. You're a big one. That's the Lawrence bulk of whelks. <laughs> That water. Beautiful. Wow. This is perfect swimming water. So we're on our way from Forks up to Squim on the 101 going around the Olympic Peninsula. And this is Crescent Lake. And you drive along yeah, the lake. Like it's absolutely beautiful. We got this green, almost turquoise water out here because of how clear it is. And this is part, I guess part of it is actually on the Olympic National Park. That's what Susanna said, so if I'm wrong, just blame her. Um, she's usually right. I'm usually the one that's wrong. Remember that, Susanna. Um, so we may, we may add this as a stop. So we've got two weeks in swim, so this may be a good place to go cool off. Push me out so I can grow singing, I'll go, I'll go. Hi. Oh, hi. What's that happening? Uh, so where are we going today? We're going to the Dungeness Spit, which is part of the recreation center, the Dungeness Recreation Area. So we're going to hike out, well, walk out um, as far as we can. It's five miles to the lighthouse. <laughs> two hours but it's straight it's so we're gonna do a 10 mile hike today maybe we'll see how far we can go get did as you, close to the lighthouse as we can did you inform the child of this nope i just said we're going for a walk and he might be able to hatch some pokemon eggs perfect so we're staying in squim spelled s-e-q-u-i-m it's not pronounced seclum it's squim it's by port angeles on the olympic peninsula and uh, we've got well we've got a week left with matt here and then we've got another week uh here. So two weeks total, but only a week left with Matt, so we're going to try to get out and do some hiking. Um, so we're going to do the spit today. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Hurricane Ridge, which is part of Olympic National Park, and uh, our friends at the Hungry Cuban Adventures, they did it, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And shh, don't tell the child it might be 10 miles. He's going to be angry. So the reason why we're going at the time that we're going is because we want to get to the lighthouse at low tide or around that time period. Otherwise, you're trying to scramble along the um, driftwood and rocks. And they said the driftwood can be unpredictable. Yeah, it's not very stable. So they suggested, you know, if you go at a certain time, you know, watch the tides or whatever, you can, it's a sandy walk the whole way. Well, it is driftwood. You know, it's kind of in the name. It's, you know, it, it could just drift. Yeah. Nobody really relies on drifters. No. No. So we're on the, the short wooded area on the trail out to the beach to go. It's not a beach. It's a spit, right? It's the world's, my wife just spat. <laughs> she's supposed to be a lady. 
Anyway, this is one of the world's largest natural spits that we're going to be going out to. Not one of. No, no, no. Well, according to this piece of this document right here, this free document. Oh, you say one of. Let me check my documentation here. One of the world's longest natural sand spits. Yeah, it's 15 feet a year. It grows 15 feet every year, so sooner or later it will be the world's largest spit. Anyway, uh, Juan and Mary over at the Hungry Cuban Adventures, they recommended this as well. We kind of felt like we were almost following them for the last few weeks, and then we finally met up uh, last night with them for the first time, had dinner, and just talked all things travel, YouTube, um, wonderful, wonderful people, very genuine. Um, so it's nice to have new friends that almost, I mean, they were like, almost like having old friends. So anyway, they recommended this, and so we're, we're taking their recommendations. So way back there, those trees, right about there, getting from the parking lot down to those trees is a half mile hike through the woods. And then from that point out to the lighthouse is five miles. So this whole thing could be 11 miles if we decide to do it all. We brought provisions. We have water, we have snacks. It just comes down to mental, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Mental toughness. Fortitude, intestinal fortitude. That sounds cool. How you doing, Bubba? Huh? You're cold? Yes. It's a little chilly today, huh? I think it's more than a We may not have so intestinal fortitude. Point right there where we can't see any further and see how far the lighthouse is from there. Okay. Matt, do you have intestinal fortitude? No. What is that? Like the strength to just keep going and stick it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did it in for it. Intestinal. <laughs> I was like, no, deep I in my stomach. I've got the fortitude. Is that not how it's pronounced? How, what is it? So, what is it? What? It's intestinal fortitude, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's immense fortitude. What is it? Endurance. How about stick to itiveness, as John Madden would like to say? Do you have stick to itiveness, Corbin? Not really. Not really. Well, we're gonna just stick to it and see what happens to the tiveness later on, okay? How close are we? Not that close. <laughs> we're maybe halfway. We're, we are officially, at this point, two fifths of the way. It's five miles uh, from, so it's a half mile walk through the woods to the starting point of the trail. Five miles to the lighthouse, five miles back. So the whole thing is 11 miles. Okay. Well, we just found out that we don't have stick to it with this. Oh, it's not that. It's, it's cold. It's cold, and you know, we've got sniffles on the little one. and So try to get some photos from here, and then maybe we'll head back. Maybe we'll get to see a movie tonight. Yeah. But this, this is the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Juan de Fuca, however you pronounce it. And that over there, that's Canada. That's a ship. And then over there is the Puget Sound. Really beautiful area. I think so yesterday it was sunny, 79 degrees. This probably would have been perfect yesterday, but we just got in town. So if you can come out and you can do the whole thing, do it. Just make sure you check the tide tables again because um, it's really critical because when the tide's higher, you will be walking in this soft stuff and through the, the driftwood. It's not an easy walk. Um, so we were kind of timing it so by the time we got to the lighthouse, it would be low tide. So it'd even be an easier walk back, but not the now. Here's my research team hard at work again researching facts for, the, for this video. We've hatched an egg.
We walked enough that we hatched an egg. <sighs> I lied, they're not hard at work finding facts. They're playing Pokemon Go. It's a It's a sickness. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.